All that elite offensive talent is gone. What are the Mountaineers going to do in 2019? Next on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Mountaineers. We bring in uh, Skylar Callahan. You can join him and the rest of the crew at Dub V Nation to talk West Virginia football with a whole new cast of uh, characters on the offense for the most part, looking at wide receiver and quarterback. And please check out the other videos as we break down the Mountaineers and the rest of college football position by position. Help us build the channel by grabbing the link in the description the section below. Uh, do your shopping at Amazon using that link and help us grow the voice of college football. At running back, the top three guys are back. You got Kennedy McCoy, you got Letty Brown, Martel Petaway. Uh, and with the quarterback situation being what it is, maybe more reliance on the running game from the running back position. Yeah, you would have to think so. I mean, when you've got that much veteran talent back there, it's hard not to, to kind of rely on that and put the ball in their hands a lot, especially when you've got a guy as, as sound as Letty Brown. I mean, he's only going to be a true sophomore, but he has got the look, the build, and the speed to do everything that a starting running back in the Big 12 could do. He honestly looks like an SEC running back. That's how big this kid is, especially even coming in as an 18-year-old as a freshman. You just don't see guys like that coming in at running back anymore straight out of high school. Uh, we saw it a couple years ago with Wendell Smallwood, but – these guys are rare, um, and when you got a guy like that and Kennedy McCoy, who's a versatile running back and catch the ball out of the backfield, he's a pretty good uh, pass protector, and we know he can do what he can do with the home run ball. Um, he can pop for 30, 40 yards every now and then. He's good for at least one or two of those uh, every game or every other game. And then Martel Petaway, I mean, he's he's a grinder. He's gonna he's gonna bully his way through. He's gonna break tackles, and uh, he he's kind of your third down uh, back, your short yardage back. And a guy that may not get as much playing time this year, and, and it's going to be interesting to see if he even gets uh, playing time at all, is going to be the freshman, Tony Mathis. He's got a, a very similar uh, build to Martel Petaway, a little bit bigger. So don't know if we'll quite see him this year. But, again, that's four big-time backs that, that are going to have a big part in this offense. Talking West Virginia football, we've got Skyler Callahan on the line from Dub V Nation. We're breaking down uh, college football position by position, getting to as many teams as we possibly can. And if you check out the videos, you will see we are doing just that. All right, let's talk wide receiver at West Virginia. It's been one of the most uh, exciting and dynamic positions in college football over the last few years with guys like Gary Jennings and David Seals, who uh, are no longer with the program. Uh, set us up for what we might see on that end of the uh, connection with the new quarterback in play. Honestly, your guess is as good as mine when it comes okay. to the receiver position because there's so many re revolving pieces. Guys are playing different positions they've never played before. Marcus Sims is no longer with the team. He entered, entered the transfer portal, which we talked about last time. Huge loss for them, uh, especially uh, with Jennings and Seals gone to the NFL. They really kind of thought that Marcus Sims is going to be that next big, uh, the next guy to step up into those into those shoes, but he's out of the picture. Um, and also is a redshirt freshman, Dylan Spalding, who just uh, transferred to James Madison last week, and he was a guy that was kind of popping out in spring practice. So that's another big loss. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a, a huge loss, but it, it's definitely going to hurt when it comes to the, the depth situation at the, at the receiver position. Uh, but now you got to look at T.J. Simmons, the kid that transferred from Alabama a couple years ago. He got a little bit of playing time here in there last year. It uh, was obviously overshadowed by the stars of the offense. But he's got to have it. He's got to step up. He's got to become uh, more of a reliable guy in this offense. Not saying he has to be a go-to guy like a Gary Jennings or David Sills, but if he can come in and have a nice 40-50 uh, reception type of year and post maybe six, seven hundred yards, I think that's going to be enough to to elevate this offense to where it needs to be. And you're also talking about young guys, Bryce Wheaton, Sam James, both redshirt freshmen. We saw get some playing time towards the end of last year with that new redshirt rule, uh, being able to play four games and keeping your redshirt. That is definitely going to benefit those kids help coming into this year. Sam James is maybe the fastest kid that has ever stepped in West Virginia when it comes to the – well, I wouldn't say ever, but maybe the last 10, 15 years. Uh, right there with Tavon Austin. This dude can fly. Now, he doesn't have the shake and bake Tavon does, but when you're running from point A to point B, Sam James is a name you're going to want to keep your, your eye out for, uh, especially um, when it comes to 
you know, looking at receivers across the country, kind of almost reminds you of Marquise Lee, just that that's the way he can get going really quick. And I don't know how Georgia missed on this kid right in the backyard of Richmond Hill. I, I don't know how Georgia, Georgia Tech and, and those guys, they completely just overlooked this guy. Uh, Bryce Wheaton out of North Carolina. He's a, he's a big kid, six foot four, 210 pounds. Uh, could maybe eventually evolve into that red zone threat that David Sills was, but he's he's got some a way to go yet. He, he's got to be able to catch some more balls and become more reliable. So uh, those are a couple names along with uh, the Temple transfer, Sean Ryan, which I believe they're still waiting uh, to get clearance off from the NCAA. So just looking at the stats sheet, we see Sam James last year with two catches. Yeah. Two yards. So that's why we're bringing you on, Skyler, because you look at that and, and – guy's not fast he only gained a, a yard per catch okay obviously uh, they probably dumped it off to him twice and that was that uh somebody got in the way uh but uh we'll be looking out for sam james that's interesting uh you note that he's from georgia richmond hill georgia the 247 composite the year he came out which was 2018 had him rated as the 128th rated wide receiver so george is not going after those guys so uh the blazing speed. We will see if he's got the hands and the moves and the durability to uh, make it all happen and run the routes and uh, get the job done. That should be pretty fascinating. TJ Simmons did catch 28 passes last year, a couple touchdowns for him. So he was fairly productive. He's been out there. So um, you would expect uh, that productivity without the likes of Sills and Sims and Jennings to fall into his lap. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I think he's about a 50 to 60 catch guy. I don't think he's ever uh, going to be that number one go-to target. And I still think that, honestly, Sam James or maybe eventually Bryce Wheaton emerge into that even as a retro freshman. I just don't think T.J. Simmons is that kind of guy. He, he's always going to play off the ball, and that's that's kind of hard to say. Usually that's a basketball term, but he's going to play off the ball. He's going to be that second or third guy uh, that that's going to be uh, – or the second or third look in, when it goes through the passing progression. So I don't – I don't expect him to pop out for 70, 80, 90 catches a, a year, and I don't really expect a lot of guys to do that. But uh, 50, 60 catches for him is probably good enough. And, again, some of these young freshmen uh, that are just coming in this year, Ollie Jennings out of Virginia and uh, Winston Wright, another Georgia kid, these are two guys that are going to be household names, I think. I don't want to be bold here. I think these two guys are going to be about just as productive as the Seals and Jennings combo were last the last two years but it's going to take some time obviously i think they're going to need to grow into their body frame a little bit and, and kind of fill out but once they do they're going to be really fun to watch folks you're watching the channel here so you love college football that's pretty obvious so join me over at uh, the voice of college football community on patreon i'm going to deliver two live streams each and every week one answering your questions directly so at this point last year we had six thousand comments come into the youtube channel this day right now we are at over thirty six thousand this year uh in terms of comments to the youtube channel so i am going to react and respond to those live and then also we do a second live stream on patreon each and every week where we bring you the fan the viewer we bring you as part of our community on it to talk college football with me so it should be a whole lot of fun so join me on patreon at mark rogers tv and join Skyler and me as we cut more videos, look at the defense, look at the offensive line. We're going to break down the Mountaineers position by position. Skyler, we appreciate you stopping by, man. Absolutely. Thank you. And also want to give you guys a, a congratulatory uh, or remark, I guess, on your 10,000 subscribers. Or was it 10,000 subscribers? 10,000. 10,000. So congrats to that. And uh, I'm blessed to be a part of this.